Hello and welcome to another standard video. Today we're taking a look at a mono black demons deck, which is currently very well positioned in the best of one ladder, while still being relatively budget friendly, without any compromises coming in at 12 rares and 6 mythics, but at least most of those rares are cool spells as opposed to rare dual lanes. And one of the build around cards in the deck is the new unholy annex slash ritual chamber. One of these room cards can play either half of the enchantment first. With the annex we get a 3 mana enchantment saying at the beginning of our end step we draw a card, but we lose two life unless we control a demon, in which case we gain two life and the opponent loses two life. So we would love to have some demons in play, and that's where a ritual chamber will come in handy for five mana making a 6-6 six, six flying demon token. And then we've got more demons throughout with two copies of Archfiend of the Dross, a four mana 6-6 six, six flyer saying whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, they lose two life. Now it does have a little bit of a drawback with the oil counters, which can make us lose the game, but usually doesn't come up since we can often close out the game before it happens. Just have to watch out for opposing copies of Glissa hitting us, since that can potentially remove those oil counters. And then the real star of the show is the Bloodletter of Aklazot, a 4 mana 2-4 flying demon, saying if an opponent would lose life during our turn, they lose twice that much life instead. So hitting the opponent with our 2-powered flyer essentially deals 4 damage. With the Archfiend or the 6-6 six, six demon token in play already, we can now deal 12 damage and then end of turn unholy annex also doubles its damage output so now making the opponent lose four life as opposed to two and of course the more blood letters we have in play the more that effect will stack as well so with a double blood letter and an unholy annex we can win the game without ever needing to attack and then there's also the two card combo which can win us the game on turn four with unstoppable slasher a two three death touch if it deals common damage to a player they lose half their life around it up so a turn three slasher hitting the opponent with a turn four blood letter in play makes the opponent lose half their life, doubled by blood letter means they die no matter which life total they had. And then Slasher is also a recursive threat. If it dies, if it had no counters on it, we get to return it to the battlefield tapped under its owner's control with two stun counters on it, so it will come back for us as well. And then uh, two copies of Liliana of the Veil is also pretty well positioned right now, since there are a lot of aura strategies in the best of one ladder, which tend to go all in on one creature, protecting it with ward and hexproof. So being able to make the opponent sacrifice a creature with a minus two is pretty effective. And then the plus one still useful against control decks, where we can maybe discard some of our spot removal spells that don't have any targets and work our way towards the minus six ultimate, which can also be quite backbreaking. And then the mana base is a thing of beauty, just 22 swamps and two copies of Mishra's Foundry, which can also maybe chip in for a bit of extra damage, so that can also help out against control. And then the early turns are all cheap interaction, which is great against all the aggro decks in the format, four copies of Cutdown for creature matchups. The rest can also maybe take away a removal spell that could break up or slasher plus bloodletter combo, and also still good against all their mid-range and control strategies. And then at two mana, I'm playing a mix of spot removal with Anoint with Affliction, especially good against the red decks, which rely on creatures dying. We've got Go for the Throat to deal with larger threats, Nowhere to Run, another excellent card in the Aura matchup, and Shildra's Edict is also quite good there, while still being an answer to Planeswalkers. And then a Deep Cavern Band gives us another Hand Disruption spell at 2 mana, that can also maybe chip in and gain a bit of life back. So yeah, it's a very streamlined deck. You can always mess around with some of the numbers. You can also try Shield Root at 4 mana, even though it's not a demon. But the core is still going to be Slasher with a Blood Letter and Unholy Annex. And then you can kind of build from there. So yeah, let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. We are on the draw with a fine hand. Some interaction on 2 and then Slasher into hopefully Blood Letter to set up the one-hit KO. Opponent red-white, so we'll have to wait and see if it's the tokens deck or the aura deck. The aura deck I think is a decent matchup, red-white tokens is a lot harder since they'll have plenty more removal, but it looks like the aura deck. Could already go for the throats, also don't mind playing the bat to maybe take away a sheltered by ghosts, which could otherwise interact with our other creatures. And yeah, there it is, double monstrous rage as well. Can hit pretty hard with a challenger. But now Slasher is also a decent blocker for their creature. Whereas Sheltered by Ghosts would have been pretty annoying to get past. Alright, opponent with Lightning Helix. Don't usually see those burn spells. So they get their removal spell back. 
Yeah, I guess we'll run it back with a deep cavern bait. Could also decide to go for the throats, but they do have another challenger in hand. And then we've got a few options next turn. So we'll see if they pump. They don't. Maybe afraid of a cutdown, opponent plotting a slick shot, and we actually drew the cutdown. So how does that change our sequencing? Keeping cut down in response to a pump spell doesn't work when they can cast two pump spells to grow the slick shot. But um, could still go for Archfiend and then we're okay if it trades for their slick shots. And then next turn we can maybe clean up with go for the throat and cut down. Yeah, don't hate that idea. Another play would be to just go for Slasher, cut down Challenger right away, and then they need to leave a blocker back for Slasher, otherwise Bloodletter wins the game. But then we're more vulnerable to Slickshot just killing us out of nowhere. So they'll pump Challenger, find a land, and then they can pump Slickshot to trade, but then our opponent's gonna be out of resources. And we're still at a reasonable life total. Okay. And then now we could go slasher, keep up, go for the throats, which sets up the bloodletter kill next turn. Could also be safer to just remove challenger right now. So they can top deck a protection spell and get me in trouble that way. Although if they top deck a sheltered by ghosts, I guess they won't have the mana to play challenger and suit it up. So yeah, this seems safer. Just main phase go for the throats. And then they basically have to chum block. Village away to enable Valiant. And they did find another planes. Opponent attacks, so we should have it here. Sweet. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We've got a keepable hand. The rest into nowhere to run. And then Annex to draw. Facing some sort of Grixis control deck. Bitter Union could also point towards kind of a reanimator combo deck. Um, none of these really stop my demon plan. Furnace, uh, Steaming Sauna can eventually draw a lot of cards and could maybe deal the most damage, so I'll take that. But of course, Fires of Victory also very similar. So probably wouldn't be needing my spot removal, but Annex is going to be one of our better cards. Put on discarding another Bitter Union. This is where a card like Liliana could be pretty good, and we actually top decked it. As we can now discard some of our removal spells that don't otherwise have any use. So if our opponent cast fires, it would only deal 5 damage, but they could wait until their turn to then deal 6. Yeah, I think I just go for Liliana first then. Happy to help, but Reduce I'm number of cards in hand, so their fires is less likely to take out the Archfiend. And Torture Tower discard it. And then Fires goes for Liliana, that's fine. This isn't how things were supposed to go. Don't mind losing a bit of life to draw here. And then as long as one of our demons sticks around, it can deal a lot of damage. Another Bitter Union, that's the fourth copy, I believe. Still discarding a land. Cavern implies that there are some creatures in there. Might be playing with overlords, that would also make sense. 
for now. Could also unlock the Ritual Chamber. A little bit weaker in the face of like a Bound Spell or some other specific removal. But it's more mana efficient than playing a 4-drop. And yep, into the Flood Maw, exactly what we were hoping to avoid. But that's alright, so we've got more demons coming up. Ill-timed Explosion also could have been effective. Pretty good with the rooms, which count both halves as the combined mana value. So once again could start running out a demon, or we could keep plussing Liliana to make some of their removal less effective. But I guess next turn I can go demon plus Liliana, which is more mana efficient. So I'll go with Archfiend. Less likely to die to their burn spells as well. And then we actually start gaining life with Annex. I see. Hey, that's to go and Kairi. I think we want to destroy that in response to the trigger, so they don't get a chance to stack something powerful on top, which they might already have in hand. And then they'll still get to brainstorm afterwards. And they just hit a land, so luckily for us, no expensive spell. Alright, do we just have lethal here? 12 with Archfiend if I play Bloodletter, and then Unholy Annex should get the job done. And Liliana can plus while we're here. In case the math doesn't work out. But yeah, end of turn, lose two life, also doubled by Bloodletter, and there we have it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. This hand's pretty good against aggro specifically, with cheap removal into a large flying blocker. May not be quite as good against more mid-range or control strategies. But the best of one meta is mostly dominated by aggro. So we'll have to wait and see. A red black hex mage, okay. So it might be more of a sacrifice deck. Yeah, I'll cut it down. Makes use of our mana. Slasher was an excellent pickup as well. And we do see the disturbing mirth, which doesn't mind sacrificing enchantments. Final Vengeance could be a clean answer to the Archfiend. So, yeah, I guess if they make me discard, I discard Go for the Throat and then just take the Final Vengeance. And then we can still keep our Slasher alive. Okay. Hit you for one. And our opponent already needs to potentially respect a turn for Bloodletter, so we'll see how they plan around it. If they have another black source, they can play Mirth, Sag the Curse, have a 3-2 on defense to block Slasher. Looks like this might be a Torture Tower instead, which can also exile the Slasher for good. So that would be a setback. They can play Torch at instant speed, so they could maybe wait to see if we play Bloodletter first. But Boone's gonna go for it right away. Alright, so perfect answer to the Slasher. So we definitely have a game on our hands. Playing Archfiend seems reasonable. Just to get the ball rolling, and then next turn we'll see if we draw line 5 for Ritual Chamber or start with Annex. And now for opponents, does eventually sack a creature. They also lose life to the Archfiend. Alright, we'll go with the 6-6 six, six demon. Maximum pressure. Opponents struggling to hit their land drops. So even if they have removal, they may not be able to cast all of them. Although, there's still the bat with that final vengeance underneath that they can get back. But our opponent goes straight for the Archfiend. 
gets to manifest dread. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised they didn't answer the bat first. Maybe they have more removal in hand, which would explain it. All right, final vengeance number three. That's impressive. Can answer hex mage and yeah, we'll unlock even though we're gonna start losing life. And then I'll know where to run now before they can potentially sack the hex mage for value. So we're slightly ahead on board. We've got more mana. But our opponent's got more cards in hand. And Braids at least doesn't have anything to sacrifice. Edict will clean it up. And at least the Deep Cavern Bat is making up for the life loss a little bit. Percussionist, we don't mind exiling. Yeah, they could have some instant speed sacrifice for a percussionist, but not super likely, so don't mind going for it here. And then the rest is a draw. Could cast it now. Possible our opponent has another disturbing mirth in hands and just didn't have anything to sacrifice. Or I could wait for them to maybe remove the bat and then we can snipe the vengeance. I think I'll be patient. And then now we can maybe clear a path for the slasher. And a blood letter, perfect. See what you're working with. A viper. They're one mana away from casting. And then I can play the slasher, which next turn would be lethal. Or I can play blood letter, which actually is lethal right now with the annex plus the attack from the bat. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand seems keepable. We'll eventually need a third land. Facing a blue-white control. And no more lies. Three steps ahead, two counter spells. And then Beza and Elspeth on four. So Edict can be a decent answer to Elspeth. Mostly looking at their counter spells, and uh, maybe start with a cheaper one. Bat can take their author counter. Or do we care more about Beza? Because Beza is pretty good against our slasher as well, making lots of chum blockers. Whereas three steps ahead is going to be a little awkward for them to keep up. And then Elspeth we can answer more easily than Beza. Alright, so next turn we will have to contend with three steps ahead. But our opponent's behind on board, so they need to make something happen. They also did not run out Demolition Field, which could be an answer to Mishra's Foundry. Yeah, I don't mind sending that in, since we don't have anything else going on. One card that can be very effective here is Elspeth's Smite, exiling the Slasher, but they didn't seem to have it. Already down to seven. And now Archangel Elspeth makes a token. We can essentially clear both. And then hit you again. Points at two. So even Amishra's Foundry could be lethal, but they do have Demolition Field. But nope, Ponon just runs out talent and scoops it up. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Missing a land 3, but uh, yeah, as soon as we find it, this hand's pretty decent. 
prefer playing against a creature heavy deck. And we got our wish. Might be a sacrifice deck. So we'll play the bank to have a look. And yeah, we see lots of random sacrifice fodder. Nowhere to run their only removal and then offering to draw. So it's between nowhere to run and offering. Probably just take their only removal spell. So the band can stick around. Now Percussionist is pretty good at jumping the Slasher. And then it can still sacrifice it at instant speed. But looks like they're already planning to sacrifice it here. And then we picked up Bloodletter. So that could be exciting. Interesting to note that Percussionist is an artifact, so it can't go for the throat it. So they get to exile and then make a map token draw to. They did find a black leaf cliff, so that's perfect as their third lane. And now Hex Mage can stick around as a 3 2. And they also seem to have removal, Torture Tower, again, the perfect solution to the slasher. So, yeah, could be in a bit of trouble now. Probably just run out another one. And hope they're out of answers. Could also see a Rotten Mouth Viper make an appearance. At least we can go for the throat of that one. Opponent explores. Finds a freebooter, not good enough. And equips so they can hit for six. Well, now they're just dead if we top deck an untapped land which is every land in our deck. And there we have it. So maybe a little bit too aggressive on their part, not respecting the combo. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a keepable hand, removal, threats, and card draw. If our opponent happens to be on blue-white control here, then this hand may not work out, but the Jace sleeve was a bamboozle. And I'm just going to cut down main phase so we don't run into any pump spells. So yeah, this hand's perfect for mono red. And we even have the turn for kill that they need to respect. We also need to respect their slick shots. So if they pass, I kind of need to also pass a turn. So yeah, how do we die? Opponent goes double pump spell plus cell sword or triple pump spell. It is tempting to play Slasher, because they might not have a great answer to it, and then we're threatening lethal already. But uh, yeah, this Slick Shots is not to be underestimated. So I basically have to keep up mana until I can play Slasher and keep up instant speed removal. Which currently I don't have land 5, so that could be a problem. Hardfire Hero, I could still anoint and not have to take any damage. Although, again, if I'm going to keep up removal for Slick Shot, I may as well keep up removal for both. And then still waiting on land 5. Now, I guess with Bloodletter we do have a Flying Blocker, but it's not necessarily the best one. Alright, so Hardfire Hero attacks. I'll take one just to see if they want to fire off a Pump Spell. I doubt it. And then end of turn... I can anoint now just to spend my mana. And then we don't have to worry about turn inside out, letting them manifest dread for an extra creature. So really hoping for another land here. The rest is still useful. Alright, so they actually had a pretty weak hand overall. So we can now maybe afford to play the Slasher, take Monstrous Rage... And then now that we're not afraid of dying out of nowhere, we can threaten lethal ourselves. So our opponent's gonna run out their creatures. Might of the Meek, Trigger Valiance. Finds Monstrous Rage. And let's see if they stay back to block. They don't. So yeah, if they don't have a one mana blocker, they're just dead. And it's tempting to cast a Monstrous Rage. And yep, yeah, there we have it. So 
we're at five. And our opponent's gonna be at zero. So yeah, I think we had to respect our opponent having the combo kill potential. Although had we just slammed down Slasher on three, we might have been able to win it even sooner. So yeah, we're speedrunning through the ranks with this Mono Black Demons deck. Seems very well positioned in the current meta if you're facing a lot of red aggro decks and to red white aura strategies, which are pretty weak to a lot of cheap interaction, followed by a quick win condition, which is exactly what this demon deck offers. But at the same time, we still have game in mid-range and control matchups, thanks to the Annex drawing us extra cards, or Planeswalker and Discard effects potentially clearing a path for the combo as well. So those matchups are still winnable, but if we can choose our matchups, we're probably gonna pick all these aggro decks instead. So yeah, that's gonna do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.